It's really a pleasure for me to be able to uh, talk to you about Ben Graham. But, uh, I've had some lucky days in my life, but uh, one of the luckiest was in 1949 when I was 19 years old in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I picked up a copy of The Intelligent Investor. It not only uh, changed my investment philosophy, it, it really changed my whole life. I, I'd, I'd be a, a different person in a different place if, if I hadn't have uh, uh, first seen that book. Uh, uh, I got a bedrock of uh, uh, investment philosophy that really hasn't changed ever since I read the book. I may embellish on it a little here and there, but it, it was Ben's ideas that sent me down the right right path. And uh, then a year or so later, uh, I very belatedly applied to Columbia University and Dave Dodd let me in and uh, I got to know Ben personally uh, when he was my professor uh, in the second semester there. And when I finished up, of course, I, I said I'd go to work for him for nothing and he said I was overpriced and he probably was right. But a few years later, I got a letter from him and he, uh, he said next time you're in New York, I'd like to I'd like to talk to you, and I made a point of being there about 24 hours later, and he offered me a job. And I didn't ask the salary, but fortunately, when I, at the end of the first month, I found out he'd not taken me, or he'd, maybe he'd forgotten about the fact that I'd do it for nothing. Uh, uh, and I, I got inspired working for him, uh, just being around him every day. Uh, and then we developed this friendship, which, uh, which lasted uh, until he died, about 25 years uh, later. So. Uh, I, I, I really had a quarter of a century of experience with a, a marvelous man, and, and you all know about, about his mind and his ideas and uh, uh, the influence they've had on the, the profession of security analysis, uh, uh, the influence they probably had on you and your own portfolios, and certainly me. Um, but the human side was just as, as impressive. He was a generous man. Uh, when my first son was born shortly after uh, I went back to take the job in December of 1954. My son was born, and I uh, gave him the middle name of uh, Graham. I named him after my dad, Howard, and then after Ben Graham with the middle name of Graham. And Ben came over to our apartment in White Plains and uh, uh, gave me a uh, camera and uh, a movie projector. It was a lot different doing that sort of thing in those days. And uh, so I could record uh, uh, what was happening with Howard Graham Buffett from uh, virtually the moment he was born. Uh, a little later, he, he, I think my wife had said something to him about my lack of uh, dancing ability or something, which was well justified. And uh, Ben gave me a, a certificate for some free lessons at the Arthur Murray Dance Studio in White Plains. That may have been the worst investment he ever made. Uh, it was, he, he did not get his money's worth when he, uh, when he did that. Uh, uh, he moved out to California in 1956. And, uh, uh, my family uh, visited him time after time, and he was always encouraging. The one thing about it is that you never could balance the books with Ben. He, was, he would do things for me uh, or for other members of the family, and you never could think of anything to do for him. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a real pleasure for me in a small way to be able to attempt to balance the books by just telling uh, you and the rest of the world what a wonderful human being he was. And, and that's what really counts. I mean, he, he couldn't help but be smart. I mean, he was born wired in a way where he was going to be able to accomplish things intellectually that very, very few people uh, could do. Uh, and when you think about, particularly in the light of today's markets, think what a remarkable achievement it was to be writing a book in 1934, security analysis, probably was writing it in 1932 and three. And here was a man that had been devastated by the depression and the stock market crash. Uh, you know, many of you manage money. He was managing money for people and they were disappointed with what had happened. But he could see far enough out in the future that, that he still uh, t turned out this marvelous book in a dispassionate, very rational way uh, and not overwhelmed by the, uh, the events of the previous couple of years. But he, he wrote a book where 75 or so years later, we're still uh, reading it to learn new things every day. So it was a marvelous intellectual achievement. but. But again, that he couldn't help that. He, 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 was, he, was, he was born with that brain. He didn't have to be the wonderful human being he was. I mean, he could have behaved in an arrogant manner or, or, or had, a, had a tone of superiority because he, he had to know he was smarter than 99.99% of the people around him. But he wasn't that kind of a person at all. He, he, he treated uh, all of us students 
came up to Columbia on a Thursday uh, for 20 or 25 years for just to help out a bunch of students that he might never see again, that weren't going to do anything for him. He was sharing knowledge that, in effect, was going to make them competitors. I bought some of the same stocks that uh, Graham Newman was buying, his investment company, later on. I didn't buy them in very big quantities because they didn't have that kind of money. But uh, he was creating he was creating competitors. He It didn't bother him. He, he used current examples. Uh, uh, we would sit there in class, and he would tell us about things that, that uh, we never would have found on our own. But uh, he was just a generous man he, in, 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 in every way. And... Uh, uh, I was lucky to know him, and I hope you've gotten to know him a little bit through these comments. Van Graham was a truly formidable mind, and he also had a, a clarity in, in writing. And we've talked over and over again about the power of a few simple ideas thoroughly assimilated. And, uh, and that happened with, with Graham's ideas, which came to me indirectly through Warren, but also some directly from Graham. The interesting thing for me is to watch Buffett, the former protege. And by the way, Buffett was the best student Graham had in 30 years of teaching at Columbia. And, uh, but what happened, uh, and since I knew both men, was that Buffett became way better than Graham. That is a natural outcome. It's, it's what Newton said. He said, if I've seen a little farther than other men, it's by standing on the shoulder of giants. And uh, uh, so Warren may have stood on Ben's shoulders, but he ended up seeing, seeing farther. And no doubt somebody will come along in due course and do a lot better than we have. I enjoyed making money more than Ben. I mean, it, it, candidly, I've it, with Ben, it, it just, it, it really was incidental, at least it, by the time I knew him. It may have been different when he was younger, but it just didn't, it, the process didn't, enjoy, uh, 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 the whole game did not interest him more than a dozen other things may have interested him. Well, with me, I just find it interesting. And, and, uh, and therefore, you know, I've spent, I've spent way more, a way higher percentage of my time thinking about investing and thinking about businesses. I, I probably thought way more about businesses than Ben ever did. It, he had he had other things that in, interested him. So I've pursued the game a little, uh, quite a bit differently uh, than he did. And therefore, uh, measuring the record is really the two records are not. It's not a proper measurement. I mean, he he was he was uh, he was doing victory laps while I still thought I was out there running against, you know, the whole field. But well, Graham had some uh, blind spots, uh, partly of sort of an ethical, professorial nature. He was looking for things to teach that would work for every man, that any intelligent layman could learn and do well. Well, if that's the limitation of what you're looking for, there'll be a lot of reality you won't go into because it's too hard to figure out and too hard to explain. Buffett, if there was money in it, uh, had no such restriction. <laughs> yeah, ben, ben sort of thought it was cheating if we went out and talked to the management because he just he just felt that the person who read his book, you know, living in Pocatello, Idaho, could not go out and meet the management. So he, he didn't, he, 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 and we didn't do it. I mean, when I worked for Graham Newman, it, it, I don't think I ever visited a management in, in the 21 months I was there. He just, but, you know, he, he wasn't sure whether it'd be useful Anyway, but if it was be useful, you know, that, that meant that his book was not uh, all that was needed, that you had to add something to it. I, I found it fun to go out and, and, and talk about their businesses with people or to check with competitors or suppliers or customers and all that. But uh, ben, didn't, ben didn't think there was anything wrong with that. He just, he just felt that if you had to do that, then his book was not the complete answer. And uh, uh, he didn't really want to do anything that the reader of his book couldn't do if he was on a desert island, you know, basically with just one line to a broker. <laughs> but if you stop to think about it, uh, Graham was trying to play the game of pen the donkey wearing very dark glasses. And Warren, of course, would use the biggest searchlight he could find. <laughs> yeah. Working Farm was, was uh, uh, a sort of different experience because Walter and I were in a little office. Uh, ben was in another office. It was a tiny firm, five or so people. And 
almost anything that we knew what he was looking for, and so almost anything Walter and I would come up with, uh, he he would he would tell us go buy it. But but he but he also did, did it in very very small amounts. Uh, uh, I was much more inclined to if I found something good uh, to load up on it. And Ben 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 did, was not that he was really not that interested when we were at Graham Newman. I mean, he, I didn't know it then, but he was getting close to retiring. Uh, Making money did not did not motivate him, uh, and uh, he, had, he had all the money he needed. And then I remember one time I was standing with him by the elevator. We were going, we were going down to eat at the cafeteria in the bottom of the Shannon Building, and he said, "You still remember it?" He said, "Warren." He said, "He said, don't don't worry too much about making money." He says, "It it, it won't change the way you, you you live." He says, "It'll change the way your wife lives." But <laughs> he said, "Our wives live differently." But he says, "Look at you and I are wearing the same clothes. We're going to eat in the same cafeteria. So relax." <laughs>